I'm gonna take a shot on this one. You gotta say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Let me it's go. when you realize you have your old logo up. And yeah, you, you know. still have the old th all things Rangers on there. I know, I gotta put that over that too. I gotta yeah. do all that stuff. Uh, but... <laughs> all of Mark's breakups could have made the list. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeesh. Here's one for you, Sean. Yeah. You just made the list. Yeah. I mean, one way or another, uh, breaking up isn't easy, guys. That's that's the thing. Um, but welcome back to the ATR bar talk, the ATR bar talk where we're gauging our ATR topic NHL topics by choice of drink. I just said ATR. Big Apple. Yes. Hockey. Look, it's been months. Big <laughs> Apple. Hockey. I can't say the BAH. That's not going to work. Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't so, matter. Uh, we're gauging our uh, confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. A shot, a beer, or you're buying everybody around. So let's start with this one because there were comments made this week saying the New York Rangers are not interested in Jack Eichel. Mr. Falkowski, start us off. Shot. They're interested. It, it, it's They're not interested in Kevin Adams' asking price, and that, that's going to have to go down. It. I've been saying this for months. Been saying this for probably about three months now. Um, it's going to have to go down, and eventually, it, it if they want to get a deal done and they want to deal him by training camp and not have to deal with the headache that that could, that that situation could have in a in a locker room, uh, they're going to have to lower that price. Um, I, I know that. It's kind of a fluid situation because there are teams that are supposedly in and out of it. They'll check back in and they'll see if Adams has lowered his asking price yet. Usually the response is probably going to be no. And then you're, you're looking at the same old thing. Oh, this team's back in. This team's out. This team's back in again. That's what it's going to be like until a deal is made. Um, I, I still maintain that there's interest. It's just it has to be at a reasonable price. Kevin Adams is going to have to make a concession. If he thinks he's going to screw some team and put put the nuts and the bolts to them and get a King's ransom for Jack Eichel, he's sadly mistaken. No team is going to give that up. If that was the case, a deal would have been done already. I, I've said this for months. A deal would have been done already. So if, if Kevin Adams really wants to negotiate, then he will have to show that he's willing to make some sort of concession or compromise. And he's been unwilling to do so as of now. So... Um, the interest is there, but whether the deal gets done or not anytime soon, that's another story. Anthony. Um, yeah, shot. I'm sure the Rangers are still interested in Jack Eichel, just like John said, they're not, they're not willing to pay the price yet. Buffalo is not willing to move him, uh, obviously right now, cause I haven't got an offer good enough. Um, you know, and also don't, I don't know if you saw D Dave Pagnota's article on his site, uh, about a couple days ago at this point. Jack Eichel's not going to be ready to start the season. Um, he, he, he needs to fix his neck issue. That's a problem for teams. They're not going to have him right away. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not – I'm becoming less and less confident that this actually does happen, you know, by the time training camp opens. I, I can't believe it got to this point, but yet here we are. And, yeah, sure, anything can happen. It takes one phone call. But, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know at this point. Um I think there are a lot of teams interested. Buffalo is not ready to pull the trigger. And other teams may not want to at this point right now because of his health situation. They don't know what's going on. It's a mess. It, re it really it really is a mess. But uh, I'm beginning to try to come to terms that Jack Eichel is going to be a saber on the first day of training camp. I'm going to upgrade it only to a beer. Um, the reason why is because – it's the previous regime had interest. Yes, there's interest, John. So technically speaking, it could be a shot. But there's the previous regime of uh, JD and Gordon actually was exploring getting Eichel last year. Um, Chris Drury is a BU alum, so obviously uh, he's Jack Eichel's on his radar. But at, at the term at the asking price, I think is really going to what's uh, come into this and. I don't, I don't think Drew wants to pay their asking price in any way. So that's what's making me go, look, I'll be interested. I mean, hell, I'd, I'd be interested in ScarJo if she came, she just, she just showed up. But if she told me that I had to, I, I don't know, how many hoops do I have to jump through? 
I mean, that's that's what it would come down to. So, no. Um, if, if they got to give up the farm for him, no. Good luck. The, I mean, this kind of – I think this might ring true to a point. Um, I think once he – if Adams finally realizes somewhere along the line in the season, like, hey, you know what? I can't get what I'm looking for out of these teams because of the health issue and the fact that he's going to miss a significant amount of time, then maybe somewhere during the season a deal could be made. But he's got a he, – he might have to retain salary to make that work because, again, like I've said, these high AAV contracts, they don't get moved during the season because it's a much harder move to ask of a team during a season. It becomes that much more complicated. So that that's why I think Adams has to move him b- before the start of the season. It's either that or you're putting him. He, he's sitting out the season, and you're maybe he is. You're he's and he's not getting surgery. And then becomes where we go. Where we go from here? Donald Fair is going to come in here, file a grievance because that's what he used to do with the uh, Major League Players Association. Yep. All, time. All right, moving on to our second topic: Caco Capo Capo Caco's training regimen will. Uh, lead to a breakout season, and I'm going to buy everybody around on this uh, because I got to go back there to do that. Because I, you're hearing him working out with Mika Rantanen and his strength coach, and he was he looked pretty good last year. I understand the numbers were a little bit disappointing, but I I think this kid is ready to bust out. Yes, the train and yes, the training regimen has got to have a lot to do with it. He's growing, he's getting bigger. But also, uh, Gerard Gallant having a little bit more faith in him isn't going to kill his confidence the way my driver kills my confidence when I'm playing golf. John? I'm going to say beer only because it's going to be a combination of things, like you said. A new coach, that's that's probably going to give him more time. I I think someone like Gerard Gallant is more than smart enough to notice that, you know what, the numbers might not be there, but the underlying play is really good. I mean, he was, I believe, top 30 in the league in takeaways. In his second year in the league at, what, 19, 20 years old? That's really good considering that his first season in the league, he was piss poor defensively. He was horrendous. He was one of the worst defensive players in the entire league as a rookie. So, uh, I mean, he's he's done incredible work to work on his skating. You saw the difference. The confidence was there. Um, like I said, the shooting is really a big thing for him. He, needed, he needs to improve that shot. If that shot's improved this year, then I think you could be looking at a 20 plus goal season from this kid. Um, but yeah, I think it's a combination of things. I think it's the training. I think it's Gallant. I think it's going to be increased ice time. I think it's going to be confidence. And I think it's going to be a coach. that's actually going to invest in him. David Quinn didn't seem to want to invest in the young players. I mean, it took, it took him until the end of the season to put Alexi Lafreniere there when Chris Kreider literally scored ha- uh, nine of his 20 goals in a six game span. I mean, you have a player that's on your top line that's that disappointing and you didn't move him down until the end of the year? It's just baffling. Uh, again, I'm not going to try to sit here and turn this into a bash David Quinn fest because been there, done that, beaten the dead horse, not worth it. But, I mean, I really think that Gallant is going to see a lot of this and it's going to be part of the reason why that he breaks out. But beer only because it's not the only thing. But, yes, it's going to play a big role. Anthony. Uh, beer. Um, you know, I think a lot of what John said, it, it could be a lot of factors. It's not just because uh, of a guy's training regimen. I mean, there are plenty of guys who, you know, who train, you know, balls to the wall, if you will, and, you know, don't just break out and dominate the league. So, um, you know, like it's going to be coaching, ice time, you know, fit, all that stuff. So um, Capo Caco could very well break out, um, but it's not just going to be because the guy spends a lot of time in the gym. So it's beer. All right, moving on, going back across the river. The Islanders should promote Oliver Wallstrom instead of target uh, targeting uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. Miss Larocca. Um, yeah, this 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 right here. Um, you know, actually, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go round because Oliver Wallstrom is is poised to you know have a pretty big year next year. Um, and you know. I say the time is now to put him on the top line. I think still there's a chance he, he plays on the third line, Parise, Pajot, and um, and uh, Parise. Parise, so Wallstrom, Parise, and Pajot. Um, and Palmieri stays on the first line. But I would like to see Wallstrom on the first line of Barzell. I think that they could have really good chemistry. 
Um, the guy scored 12 goals in 44 games, getting, you know, playing third line minutes and some spot duty on the power play. But it's for me, the problem is, yeah, I, it would be awesome to get Tarasenko. But if you get Tarasenko, that means one of two things has to happen. Either Oliver Wallstrom has to be in the press box, which isn't going to happen, or I think would be dumb. Or if you get Tarasenko, then you have to move another forward to make room, whether it be Beauvillier or Bailey. Those would be the only two logical choices because every other every other spot is filled. So, And obviously I'm not a proponent of training Anthony Beauvillier either. I think he's a very good player. So um, Tarasenko would be more of a luxury right now, to be honest with you. And I think Wallstrom, as he gains more experience and more playing time, can be a Tarasenko type with his shot and his release. So, um, yeah, I, I'm all about this. I'm going to go round, give Wallstrom the ice time, play him next to Barzell. Phil, round uh, for, for all the reasons that Anthony said. Uh, not only that, but I mentioned before with this team that they have they have cap space, but they've got to be careful with what they do over the next couple of years because if they add another high salary like Tarasenko, that can put them in more of a pickle. They just got out of a major pickle by with Lou Lamorello's friggin' sorcery, whatever the hell he pulled. I don't know what he did, whether it was a horse head or whether he put a, a Jedi mind trick on on uh, Steve Eiserman in Detroit because usually you don't see Steve Eiserman lose trades like that. But um, he got value for Nick Letty, and he moved the salary, didn't retain the dime on that. He got Arizona to take Andrew Ladd. Why put yourself in the same position, especially with a wild card like Tarasenko, who's had three consecutive shoulder surgeries on the same shooting shoulder? Try saying that five times fast. Um, but Oliver Wallstrom, when he was drafted, I, and Anthony, you were there. I wanted Wallstrom. I, I wanted Wallstrom. I thought he was the goal scorer that the Rangers needed. And um, there's, I don't see any reason why he can't score 20 goals with top six minutes and power play time this upcoming year. I mean, he had, what, 12 this year? Yeah. Short in the season. So yeah. why, why – if you're if you're going to invest in a – Short season in his season, season was shortened too. Yeah. I, I mean, I think this comment might actually explain things a little more. That was uh, Eiserman's mob tax payment to Big Lou. <laughs> um, but, again, he, he may he, – he, he managed that whole situ uh, situation masterfully. I got to give credit to Lou, but yeah, keep the cap space, promote the kid. You need more ELC contracts that are productive anyway. Give the kid a shot. Uh, we're gonna make it a clean, a clean sweep. Uh, I'm buying around too because it's better to keep Scott Mayfield, not open up uh, another hole. It's better to keep your prospects if you can. You don't know what Tarasenko is going to be and how many games he's going to be playing because let's say he's not healthy. Then uh, you just traded away key pieces for nothing. So um, I still think there's a way with the lower ASCII price for them to get Tarasenko. I still believe it. But if I'm Doug Armstrong and, and I say it's Wallstrom, nope. That would be my answer if I'm Lou. Yeah. And then Horst. No. <laughs> and then, no. and then, and then of no. course, the horse is head. All right, moving on. Actually, we're going to go across the river one more time, but it's going to be going to New Jersey. And Dougie Hamilton will live up to that contract. And you know what? I'm going to start up uh, this one again. Oh, it's a shot. I am not a Dougie Hamilton fan. Uh, $9 million a season. He has had injuries. And this is already the fourth organization on him. You're giving him... That many years, he he's I, – I just don't have the faith. He, he could be a pretty good defenseman. I don't know about a $9 million defenseman. So I'm going to move on to uh, Anthony. <laughs> Where are um, you going? <laughs> That's me trying to I'm gonna go. I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to go beer. Um, $9 million is a lot. Dougie Hamilton's a good – you know, he's a good defenseman. He can put up – he can put up numbers. He skates well. Defends. You know, average, not great, but not bad. Um, but he's going to be in New Jersey. Um, you know, I, I still don't think, even with adding him to Tar, Hughes has another year under his belt. I mean, he year had a, such a bad injury with injuries. Season last year with injuries. I mean, he'll be a better, but I'm not, I'm not convinced he's in a situation where he's going to put up a ton of numbers and, you know, be um, a really, really proficient defenseman. So, um Definitely very good defenseman, but I, I don't 
nine million dollars earning that in Jersey, I'm not really seeing it. So beer. Phil. I got to go beer here too. I, it almost sounds like me and Anthony are mimicking each other, but we're really on the same page with a lot of this stuff today. But uh, you, you the, the key thing here is that Jersey made some good additions. I like Tatar at what they signed him for. I, I've been saying that he could be the steal. Of the um, I like Hughes next season because I think he's going to break out. I think he's going to have a pretty big year, not a tremendous year, but he's going to take that next step. If he sure can come back and play like he did a couple of years ago, that goes a long way as well. Um, your power play would look like those three, and then maybe P.K. Subban and Dougie Hamilton. Are Subban and Hamilton on the same power play? Because, I mean, those are two trigger men right there. Hamilton's not the big slap shot guy that Subban is, but Hamilton is one of the better defenders in the league at getting his shot through to the net. And, and getting those deflection goals and getting those goals through screens and so on. So um, Hamilton, like Anthony said, is really not a great defender, but he's going to be their number one guy. He's going to eat minutes left and right. He's going to probably be a guy that plays 25 minutes a game. Now, that in itself, you got to say, hey, $9 million defenders do that type of thing. But it's the offensive numbers, and it's the development of all the other players around him that'll – really kind of determine whether Hamilton can put up the points deserving or that would make you deserving of a $9 million a year AAV. So I, I got to say beer here, but it, there's, there's a chance. I wouldn't completely rule it out, but um, I'm going with beer. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.